big one too. I mean, yeah, and there's ways to do some of those things without having an actual business partner, right? I mean, you can get a coach, mm -hmm. you can get um, accountability partners, but I get what you're saying too. If you want someone there every day, every day. It, it, in the actual details of your business, analyzing it. The only reason I don't like coaches is because, and I've coached before, and I, I believe in like 90 day coaching programs mm. more than like signing up for Tom or Mike forever because sooner or later that coach is going to run out of things to tell you. And then it's like, how long do you keep coaching with that person? Mm -hmm. Like, there's almost, there's only so much that person can, t can teach you. And when do you run out of things you can teach? Yeah, I, yeah. That and then do they just become an accountability coach? Well, that's the thing. I think there's there's different parts of coaching, and I think, you know, no matter how many times you hear something, sometimes it take it could take years for it to actually click, right? Like, if there's a lot to the program, yeah, there's a lot of regurgitating stuff you've already heard, but sometimes it, you know, I don't know. I see the good and bad of both. Yeah. You know? You're not coaching anymore, are you? I'm not coaching right now. No, I, I was with Mike Ferry for like four or five years. And then um, I just went to the Tom Ferry Summit, you know, right. to Did just like kind of check it out. I, you know, it was it was interesting because the first day they were talking a lot about Instagram and social media. And I just felt like I already know all this. Yeah, But I will say, you know, as things progressed i did start to learn a lot more through uh, you know as as mm -hmm. the days went on and you know it's interesting to see the contrast between mike and you know mike ferry which is tom's dad obviously and then and then tom ferry tom ferry is much more um marketing driven um much more technology driven you know mike is very old school mike's very much just like you're hitting the phones yeah pounding the, the, pounding the and, and that's it yeah i mean now he gets into the details about you know objection handling and, and and i think if you're a brand new agent and you're trying to figure out the right way to go in my opinion i think if you were to start with something like mike where you can learn what to say how to say it how well you know if you get X, Y, Z objections, because those are always the same, right? I mean, they haven't really changed. No. I mean, you and I have been in the business for probably, I've been almost 10 years. Six years. Six years. The same objections for the most part yeah. that you got day one are the Still same ones you get, you get now for the most part. Sure, open door and stuff kind of changes things. But, you know, though, even even the discount brokers and stuff, those have been around since the 70s. Plus, it's so funny. Everyone freaks out and it's like, dude, those people have been around when everyone's freaking about purple brick, yep. I'm like, dude, they've all been around. They come and they go. Yeah. Right? I, I haven't heard. Is purple, purple brick, brick went out of business. Went out of business. Okay, perfect. You know, it was great. Exactly. Everyone always asks me, like, I didn't oh. even know. You see, <laughs> and so many people are like, oh, why do you like do the video? I'm like, you know why? Because I might say something that happens. I did a panel and I remember that was a question. What do you guys think about purple brick? And I said, purple bricks will be out of business in the next six months. And I was right. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, ding. And I was so pumped I got on camera. I was like, yeah. So, so for you, like, I think that's the thing that people don't understand is like, they want to do the marketing. They want to do the podcast. They want to do it kind of like what we do on social media, but they don't realize we set a base before we yes. did this. Yes. Yes. You we had a base. Dive into this first. We had a base of banging the open houses. You were, I was banging open houses twice a, twice a weekend, every weekend, calling people, Hey, can I do an open house at your house? You were banging the phones, banging the doors, yep. like. And I remember when I first met you, you were still banging the phones. Yeah. And I'm like, and, doors. and I remember being like, God, oh, dude, how did you do this? You know? <laughs> yep. I remember those conversations. Yeah. And I'm just like I. watching you guys do it. And I remember one time I went out and did it and I was just like, I can't do this. Like, I cannot. <laughs> like, I'm in Hemet or Santa Santa. I remember where oh, I was at. Yeah, I was that's like, not, not where, really I, where you want to bang the doors. And I was just like, dude, I can't. I'm not going to be able to do this every day. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. No, I get it, man. Uh, you know, it's, I think you need to tailor make your business to your personality, but I also think sometimes people can hear that, especially maybe a new agent or a lazy agent and mm -hmm. thinks, well, my personality is to just chill. So I'm yeah. just, you know, and then nothing gets done. Yeah. You have to like, you have to take one way or the other, or maybe combine both. Right. So it's like for you, you've done a lot more of just like marketing, marketing, yeah. marketing videos, you know, a lot more just focusing on social media. Mm -hmm and building a team initially. Yeah. For me, it was initially bang the doors, bang the phones, and build the social media along mm -hmm. with it, you know? So, 
but you can't just do nothing. And I think that's what a lot of agents do is just when they get in the business, they think, well, I got my license. My phone should start ringing any yeah. minute. And it just doesn't. Well, I just think that people don't realize, like, if you run the numbers, like how many calls you have to make to get a deal, how many doors you have to do. Yeah. Like how many videos you have to post in my eyes to like get a video. Like me and John Butler were talking yesterday. It's so funny how the world works. Butler's like, I'm so happy you called me. Like I was thinking about you yesterday. And <laughs> He's like, a great guy. Me and Butler kind of do the same thing. We do the podcast. Butler's been doing it way longer than me. Like if you don't know who John Butler is, like you got to go follow him. Like he's he's been doing. He was the OG of podcasting and video back when he had. I think he used to have to like record it on a flip phone. And yeah, I don't even. He's know. He's been doing it for a long he's time. He's been doing the video for a while. He was Facebook Live before I was even probably even on Facebook. And like he was like, how do you, he's like. I'm at a moment where it's like, I'm doing all these video, like podcasts and then like no one watched them and I'm clipping them all up and no one's watching the clips. And like, yeah, he's yeah. just like, I'm kind of hitting that wall, you know, like, is this stuff worth it? And I was like, we only need one, like one to hit, one yeah. to hit, dude. Just remember that you only need one to hit. Well, I think the other thing too is like, you have to do, you have to be cognizant of the trends too, I think, you yeah. know, like, I, I don't think it's one, it's enough to just put a video out all the time or whatever. Like you, you kind of have to study like, okay, reels are a thing now, or this is a thing now or that. And like <clears throat> play with it, you know, a little yeah. bit, right? Like I've noticed you've been doing more of that a little bit more lately, different styles, different, you know, okay, well let's try more of like an up close yeah. shot. That's more like a reality show yeah. vibe or, you know, you can't just say, hey, I'm going to keep putting out this thing. And I mean, you can. I mean, you can if you just do one thing and it's consistent, it, it might catch on. But you also have to kind of stop and, and constantly reinvent your business. And that doesn't mean tear it down and completely start over, but like implement new things, right? Like, OK, we're on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram, but maybe now we got to do TikTok or well, well, whatever. I saw, I saw you know? TikTok like, this yeah, year. whatever I that means. I never said I was going to be on TikTok. Yeah, same here. Same and I was here. like, I'm never doing TikTok. Like, I think it's stupid. Like, da da da. But then I'm like, okay, like, it's a platform I need to be on. But the problem is, like, and I'll say, like, we're doing it lazy right now. Like, we're just taking old clips I had. Yeah, but on, you're still doing it. I'm putting it on there. Yes. But, like, I'm like, now, like, now I'm like, I they don't know TikTok that well. So like all I'm following on TikTok, like is like people are the people about growing their TikTok. Mm -hmm. So everyone I follow is just people that talk about growing TikTok. And so like my feed is just those people <laughs> because like the hard part I think with social media is like, I don't know how, like we've talked about it, but like I'm, I'm very good at not wasting time on it. And I think that's a problem that some people get into. You just, you realize like, man, I've been on Instagram for an hour. Yes, and totally. You're, but you're just scrolling, but you're not actually like, you're not like picking up anything. That's why on TikTok, I'm like, I'm only gonna follow people that talk about growing TikTok. 